Lear, king of Britain, is old. He decides to divide his kingdom between his three daughters. Goneril, wife of the Duke of Albany, Regan, wife of the Duke of Cornwall, and the youngest, Cordelia, whose suitors are the King of France and the Duke of Burgundy. Attend the Lords of France and Burgundy, Gloucester. I shall, my liege. Meantime, we shall express our darker purpose. Give me the map there. Know that we have divided in three our kingdom, and tis our fast intent to shake all cares and troubles from our age, conferring them on younger strengths, whilst we, unburthened, crawl towards death. Our son of Cornwall, and you are no less loving son of Albany, we have this hour a constant will to publish our daughter's several dowers, that future strife may be prevented now. The princes, France and Burgundy, great rivals in our youngest daughter's love, long in our court have made their amorous sojourn and here are to be answered. Tell me, my daughters, which of you shall we say doth love us most, that we our largest bounty may extend when nature doth with merit challenge? Goneril, our eldest born, speak first. Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space and liberty, beyond what can be valued, rich or rare, no less than life, with grace, health, beauty, honour, as much as child e'er loved or father found. A love that makes breath poor and speech unable. Beyond all manner of so much I love you. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, with shadowy forests and with champagnes rich, with plenteous rivers and wide-skirted meads, we make thee, lady. To thine and Albany's issues be this perpetual. What says our second daughter, our dearest Regan, Wife to Cornwall. Speak. Sir, I am made of that self metal as my sister and prize me at her worth. In my true heart I find she names my very deed of love. Only she comes too short. That I profess myself an enemy to all other joys which the most precious square of sense possesses. And find I am alone felicitate in your dear highness love. To thee and thine hereditary ever remain this ample third of our fair kingdom, no less in space, validity, and pleasure than that conferred on Goneril. And now our joy, although the last, not least, to whose young love the vines of France and milk of Burgundy strive to be interested. What can you say to draw a third more opulent than your sister's? Speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. Unhappy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I love your majesty according to my bond. No more, nor less. How? How, Cordelia? Mend your speech a little, lest it may mar your fortunes. Good my lord, you have begot me, bred me, loved me. I return those duties back as a right fit, obey you, love you, and most honour you. Why have my sisters husbands if they say they love you all? Haply when I shall wed, that lord whose hand must take my plight shall carry half my love with him, half my care and duty. Sure, I shall never marry like my sisters to love my father or... But goes thy heart with this? I, my good lord. So young and so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so. Thy truth then be thy dower. 
For by the sacred radiance of the sun, the mysteries of Hecate of the night, by all the operation of the orbs from whom we do exist and cease to be, here I disclaim all my paternal care, propinquity and property of blood, and as a stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this forever. Good my liege, he is kept. Come not between the dragon and his wrath. I loved her most and thought to set my rest on her kindness. Hence and avoid my sight. So be my grave, my peace, as here I give her father's heart from her. Call France. Who stares? Call Burgundy. Cornwall and Albany. With my two daughters' dowers, digest the third. Let pride, which she calls plainness, marry her. I do invest you jointly with my power, preeminence, and all the large effects that troop with majesty. Ourself, my monthly course, with reservation of an hundred nights, by you to be sustained, shall our abode make with you by due turn. Only we still retain the name and all the addition to a king. The sway, revenue, execution of the rest, beloved sons, be yours. Which to confirm this coronet, Part betwixt you. Royal Lear, whom I have ever honoured as my king, loved as my father, as my master followed, as my great patron thought on in my prayers, reserve thy state, and in thy best consideration check this hideous rashness. Answer my life, my judgment, thy youngest daughter does not love thee least, nor are those empty-hearted whose low sounds reverb no hollowness. Tend on thy life no more. My life I never held but as a pawn to wage against thine enemies, nor fear to lose it, thy safety being the motive. Hear me, recreant, on thine allegiance, hear me. Since thou hast sought to make us break our vows, which we durst never yet, and with strain pride to come between our sentence and our power, which nor our nature nor our place could bear, our potency made good, take thy reward. Five days we do allot thee for provision to shield thee from diseases of the world, and on the sixth to turn thy hated back upon our kingdom. If on the tenth day following thy banished trunk be found in our dominions, that moment is thy death. Away, by Jupiter, this shall not be revoked. Sith, thus thou wilt appear. Freedom lives hence, and banishment is here. The gods to their dear shelter take thee, maid, that justly thinkst and hast most rightly said. And your large speeches may your deeds approve, that good effects may spring from words of love. Thus Kent, O princes, bids you all adieu. He'll shape his old course in a country new. France and Burgundy, my noble lord. My lord of Burgundy, we first address towards you, who with this king hath rivaled for our daughter. What in the least will you require in present dar with her, or cease your quest of love? Most royal majesty, I crave no more than hath your highness offered, nor will you tender less. Right noble Burgundy, when she was dear to us, we did hold her so, but now her price is fallen. Sir, there she stands. If aught within that little seeming substance, or all of it with our displeasure pierced, and nothing more may fitly like your grace, she is there and she is yours. Pardon me, royal sir. Election makes not up on such conditions. Then leave her, sir. For by the power that made me, I tell you all her wealth. For you, great king, I would not from your love make such a stray to match you where I hate. Therefore, beseech you to avert your liking a more worthier way than on a wretch whom nature is ashamed almost to acknowledge hers. Fairest Cordelia, that art most rich being poor, most choice forsaken and most loved despised. Thy dowerless daughter, king, thrown to my chance, is queen of us, of ours, and our fair France. Not all the dukes of waterish Burgundy can buy this unprized precious maid of me. Bid them farewell, Cordelia, 
the one time. Thou losest here a better where to find. Thou hast her, France. Let her be thine, for we have no such daughter, nor shall ever see that face of hers again. Therefore, begun, without our grace, our love, our benism. Come, noble Burgundy. Cordelia leaves Britain to become Queen of France. Lear goes first with his hundred knights to stay with Goneril and her husband, Albany. By day and night he wrongs me. Every hour he flashes into one gross crime or other that sets us all at odds. I'll not endure it. His knights grow riotous and himself upbraids us on every trifle. When he returns from hunting, I will not speak with him. Say I am sick. If you come slack of former services, you shall do well. The fault of it, I'll answer. He's coming, madam. I hear him. Put on what weary negligence you please, you and your fellows. I'd have it come to question. If he distaste it, let him to my sister, whose mind and mine I know in that are one. And let his knights have colder looks among you. What grows of it, no matter. Advise your fellows so. How now, daughter? What makes that frontlet on? Methinks of late you're too much of the frown. Thou wast a pretty fellow when thou hadst no need to care for her frowning. <laughs> now thou art an old without a figure. I am better than thou art now. I am a fool. Thou art nothing. Yes, forsooth, I will hold my tongue. So your face bids me, though you say nothing. Mum, mum. He that keeps nor crust nor crumb, weary of all, shall want some. <laughs> That's a shield piece, God. Not only, sir, this you're all licensed, fool, but other of your insolent retinue do hourly carp and quarrel, breaking forth in rank and not to be endured riots, well, sir. For you know, oh, uncle, the hedge sparrow fed the cuckoo so long that it had its head bit off by its young. So out went the candle, and we were left darkling. Are you our daughter? I would you would make use of your good wisdom, whereof I know you are fraught, and put away these dispositions, which of late transport you from what you rightly are. <laughs> May not an ass know when the cart draws the horse? Whoop, jug, galopy. Does any here know me? This is not Lear. Does Lear walk thus, speak thus? Who is it that can tell me who I am? Lear's shadow. I do beseech you to understand my purposes are right. As you are old and reverent, should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so debauched and bold, that this our court, infected with their manners, shows like a riotous inn. Epicurism and lust make it more like a tavern or a brothel than a graced palace. The shame itself doth speak for instant remedy. Be then desired by her that else will take the thing she begs, a little to disquantity your train, and the remainders that shall still depend to be such men as may besought your age, which know themselves and you. Darkness, devils. Saddle my horses, call my train together. Degenerate bastard, I'll not trouble thee. Yet have I left a daughter. Pray, sir, be patient. My train are men of choice and rarest parts, that all particulars of duty know, and in a most exact regard support the worships of their name. Oh, most small fault. How ugly didst thou in Cordelia show, which like an engine wrenched my frame of nature from the fixed place, drew from my heart all love and added to the gall. Oh, Lear, 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 beat at this gate that let thy folly in and thy dear judgment out. Go. Go, my people. My lord, I am guiltless, as I am ignorant of what hath moved you. It may be so, my lord of Albany. Here, nature, here. Dear goddess, here. Suspend thy purpose, if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful. Turn all her mother's pains and benefits to laughter and contempt that she may feel how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. Away! Away!
How now, Oswald? What, have you writ that letter to my sister? Aye, madam. Take you some company and away to horse. Inform her full of my particular fear, and there to add such reasons of your own as may compact it more. I'll get you gone, and hasten your return. On receipt of Goneril's letter, Regan and her husband Cornwall, unwilling to receive the king, hasten to the castle of the Earl of Gloucester, where Lear follows them. They refuse to see him. My dear lord, you know the fiery quality of the duke, how unremovable and fixed he is in his own course. Vengeance, plague, death, confusion, fiery, what quality? Why, Gloucester, Gloucester, I'd speak with the Duke of Cornwall and his wife. Well, my good lord, I have informed them so. Informed them? Dost thou understand me, man? Aye, my good lord. The king would speak with Cornwall. The dear father would with his daughter speak, commands her service. Are they informed of this, my breath and blood? Go, tell the duke and wife I'd speak with them now, presently. Bid them come forth and hear me, or at their chamber door I'll beat the drum till it cries sleep to death. I am glad to see your highness. Regan, I think you are. I know what reason I have to think so. If thou shouldst not be glad, I would divorce me from thy mother's tomb, sepulchring an adulteress. Oh, beloved Regan, thy sister's naught. She hath tied sharp tooth and kindness like a vulture here. I scarce can speak to thee. Thou not believe it how depraved a quality. Oh, Regan. I pray you, sir, take patience. I have hope you less know how to value her desert than she to scant her duty. Say, how is this? I cannot think my sister in the least would fail her obligation. Oh. If, sir, perchance she have restrained the riots of your followers, it is on such ground and to such wholesome end as clears her from all blame. My curse is on her. Oh, sir, you are old. Nature in you stands on the very verge of her confine. You should be ruled and led by some discretion that discerns your state better than you yourself. Therefore, I pray you that to our sister you do make return. Say you have wronged her, sir. Ask her forgiveness. Do you but mark how this becomes the house? Dear daughter, I confess that I am old. Age is unnecessary. On my knees I beg that you'll vouchsafe me raiment, bed and food. Good, sir, no more. These are unsightly tricks. Return you to my sister. Never, Regan. She had abated me of half my train, looked black upon me, struck me with her tongue no serpent like upon the very heart. All the stored vengeances of heaven fall on her ungrateful top. Strike her young bones, you taking airs with lameness. Aye, sir. You Aye. nimble lightnings dart your blinding flames into her scornful eyes. Infect her beauty, you fen-sucked frogs, drawn by the powerful sun to fall and blast her pride. Oh, the blessed gods. So will you wish on me when the rash mood is on? No, Regan. Thou shalt never have my curse. Thy tender, hefted nature cannot give thee o'er to harshness. Her eyes are fierce, but thine do comfort and not burn. Tis not in thee to grudge my pleasures, to cut off my train, to bandy hasty words, to scant my sizes, and in conclusion to oppose the bolt against my coming in. Thou better knowest the offices of nature, bond of childhood. Thy half of the kingdom hast thou not forgot. Wherewith I be endowed. What trumpet's that? I know it, my sister's. This approves her letter that she would soon be here. Who comes here? Conorin. Oh, heaven. If you do love old men, 
If your sweet sway allow obedience, if yourselves are old, make it your cause. Send down and take my part. Art not ashamed to look upon this beard? Oh, Regan, wilt thou take her by the hand? Why not by the hand, sir? How have I offended? All's not offence at indiscretion fines and dotage terms. Sir. Oh, sides, you're too tough. Will you yet hold? I pray you, father, being weak, seem so. If till the expiration of your month you will return and sojourn with my sister, dismissing half your train, come then to me. I am now from home and out of that provision which will be needful for your entertainment. Return with her and fifty men dismissed? Persuade me rather to be slave and sumpter to this detested groom. At your choice, sir. I prithee, daughter, do not make me mad. I will not trouble thee, my child. Farewell. We'll no more meet. We'll no more see one another. And yet thou art my flesh, my blood, my daughter. Or rather a disease that's in my flesh, which I must needs call mine. I can be patient. I can stay with Regan. I and my hundred knights. Not altogether so. Oh. I looked not for you yet, nor am provided for your fit welcome. Give ear, sir, to my sister. If you will come to me, for now I spy a danger, I entreat you to bring but five and twenty. To no more will I give place or notice. I gave you all. And in good time you gave it. Made you my guardians, my depositors, but kept a reservation to be followed by such a number. What must I come to thee with five and twenty, Rig? Said thou so, so. And speak it again, my lord. No more with me. I'm gone, Earl. I'll go with thee. Thy fifty yet of double five and twenty, and thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord. What need you five and twenty, ten or five, to follow in a house where twice so many have command to tend you? What need one? Oh, reason, not the need. Our basest beggars are in the poorest things superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature needs. Man's life as cheap as beasts. But for true need, you heavens give me patience. Patience I need. You see me here, you gods, a poor old man, as full of grief as age, wretched in both. If it be you that stir these daughters' hearts against their father, fool me not so much to bear it tamely. Touch me with noble anger, and let not woman's weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. No, you unnatural hags. I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall. I will do such things. What they are yet I know not. But they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause for weeping. But this heart shall break into a hundred thousand floors. Or ere I'll weep. Oh, fool. I shall go mad.
king, with only his fool for company, leaves the castle and wanders out into the stormy night. disguised as a servant, has followed the king. Alas, sir, are you there? Things that love night love not such nights as these. The wrathful skies gather the very wonders of the dark and make them keep their caves. Since I was man, such sheets of fire, such bursts of horrid thunder, such groans of roaring wind and rain I never remember to have heard. Man's nature cannot carry the affliction nor the fear. Let the great gods that keep this dreadful pother on our heads find out their enemies now. Tremble, thou wretch, that hast within the undivulged crimes unwept of justice. Hide thee, thou bloody hand, thou perjured and thou similar man of virtue that art incestuous. I am a man more sinned against than sinning. Gracious, my lord, hard by here is a hovel. Some friendship will it lend you against the tempest. Repose you there, whilst I to this hard house, more harder than the stones whereof tis raised, return and force their scanted courtesy. My, my wits begin to turn. Come on, my boy. Hide us, my boy. Art cold. I'm cold myself. Where is this straw, my fellow? The art of our necessities is strange and can make vile things precious. Come, your hovel. Poor fool and knave, have one part in my heart that's sorry yet for thee. He that has an a little tiny wit, with hey ho, the wind and the rain. True, my boy, must true. Be content with his fortunes fit, though the rain it raineth every day. True, my boy, true. Come, bring us to this hovel. Here is the place, my lord. Good, my lord, enter. Prithee, go in thyself. Seek thine own ease. This tempest will not give me leave to ponder on things would hurt me more. But I'll go in. In, boy, go first, thou houseless poverty. Nay, get thee in. I'll pray, and then I'll sleep. Poor naked wretches, wheresoe'er you are that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm, how shall your houseless heads and unfed sides, your looped and windowed raggedness, protect you from seasons such as these? Ah, I've taken too little care of 
this. Take physic, pump, expose thyself to feel what wretches feel, that thou mayst shake the superflux to them and show the heavens more just. The fool goes into the hovel but rushes out again terrified. He has found a seeming madman, poor Tom. In reality, Edgar, son of the Earl of Gloucester in disguise. For Gloucester's bastard son, Edmund, has persuaded his father that Edgar is plotting to kill him. Oh! Come out of here, Uncle! Here's a spirit! Oh, help me! Help, help me! Give me thy hand! Who's there? Spirit! Spirit! He says his name's poor Tom. What art thou that dost grumble there in the straw? Come forth! Away! The foul fiend follows me! Through the sharp hawthorn blow the winds. Go to thy bed and warm thee. Hast thou given all to thy two daughters? And art thou come to this? Nay, nay he reserved a blanket, else we had been all shamed. Now all the plagues that in the pendulous air hang fated all men's faults, light on thy daughters. He hath no daughters, sire. Death, traitor! Nothing could have subdued nature to such a loneliness but his unkind daughters. Is it the fashion that discarded father should have thus little mercy on the flesh? Judicious punishment. It was this flesh begot those pelican daughters. Pillicock sat on Pillicock Hill. On this cold night will turn us all to fools and madmen. Gloucester finds them at the hovel and urges Kent to take the king at once to Dover, where Cordelia has landed with a French army. The bastard Edmund denounces his father to Regan as a traitor, and on her orders, Gloucester is seized and his eyes are burnt out. He wanders blindly through the countryside, led by an old man. Oh, my good lord. I have been your tenant and your father's tenant these four score years. Away. Get thee away. Good friend, be gone. Thy comforts can do me no good at all. Thee, they may hurt. You cannot see your way. I have no way. And therefore want no eyes. I stumbled when I saw... Full oft tis seen our means secure us, and our mere defects prove our commodities. O oh, dear son Edgar, the food of thy abused father's wrath, might I but live to see thee in my touch, I'd say... I had eyes again. But who comes here? My father, poorly led. <gasps> world, world, oh world. But that thy strange mutations make us hate thee, life would not yield to age. Oh no, who's there? Poor Tom's a cold. Tis poor mad Tom. Hello, where goest? Is it a beggar man? Madman and beggar too. He has some reason, else he could not beg. In the last night's storm, I such a fellow saw, which made me think a man a worm. My son came then into my mind, and yet my mind was then scarce friends with him. I have heard more since. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods. They kill us for their sport. Come hither, fellow. Bless thy sweet eyes, they bleed. Knowest thou the way to Dover? Hi, master. There is a cliff whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. Bring me but to the very brim of it. And I repair the misery thou dost bear with something rich about me. From that place, I shall no leading need. 
Give me thy arm. Poor Tom shall lead thee. At Dover, Cordelia has heard news of her father. Alack, tis he. Why, he was met even now as mad as the vexed sea, singing aloud, crowned with rank fumiter and furrow weeds. A century sent forth, search every acre in the high-grown field and bring him to our eye. What can man's wisdom in the restoring his bereaved sense? He that helps him, take all my outward worth. There is means, madam. Our foster nurse of nature is repose, the which he lacks. That to provoke in him are many simples operative, whose power will close the eye of anguish. All blessed secrets, all you unpublished virtues of the earth, spring with my tears. Seek, seek for him, lest his ungoverned rage dissolve the life that wants the means to lead it. News, madam, the British powers are marching hitherward. It is known before. Our preparation stands in expectation of them. Oh, dear father, it is thy business that I go about. Soon may I hear and see you. King Lear is found and placed in the care of a doctor. How does the king? Madam, sleeps still. Oh, my dear father. Restoration, hang thy medicine on my lips, and let this kiss repair those violent harms that my two sisters have in thy reverence made. Had you not been there, father, these white flakes did challenge pity of them. Was this a face to be opposed against the warring winds? He wakes. Speak to him. Madam, do you? Tis fittest. How does my royal lord? How fares your majesty? You do me wrong to take me out of the grave. You are a soul in bliss, but I am bound for a wheel of fire that mine own tears do scold like molten lead. Sir, do you know me? You are a spirit, I know. When did you die? Still, still far wide. He's scarce awake. Let him alone a while. Where have I been? Where am I? Fair daylight. I am mightily abused. I should e'en die of pity to see another thus. I know not what to say. I will not swear these are my hands. Let's see. I, I feel this pinprick. Would I were assured of my condition. Oh, look upon me, sir, and hold your hands in benediction o'er me. No, sir, you must not kneel. Pray do not mock me. I'm a very foolish, fond old man, four score and upwards, not an hour more or less, and to deal plainly, I, I fear I am not in my perfect mind thinks I should know you and know this man. Yet I am doubtful, for I am mainly ignorant place this is, and all the skill I have remembers not these garments. But I know not where I did lodge last night. Do not laugh at me, for as I am a man, I think this lady to be my child, Cordelia. And so I am. I am. Be thy tears wet. Yes, Faith. I pray you, weep not. If you have poison for me, I will drink it. I know you do not love me. Your sisters have, as I do remember, done me wrong. You had some cause. They had none. No cause. No cause. Am I in France? In your own kingdom, sire. Oh, 
Do not abuse me. Wilt please, your highness, walk. You must bear with me. Pray you now, forget and forgive. I am old and foolish. The British forces under the command of Edmund defeat the French. King Lear and Cordelia are taken prisoner. Some officers, take them away. We are not the first who, with the best meaning, have incurred the worst. For thee, oppressed king, am I cast down. Myself could else outfrown false fortune's frown. Shall we not see these daughters and these sisters? No, 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 no. Come, let's away to prison. We two alone will sing like birds in a cage. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. So we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales and laugh at gilded butterflies and hear poor rogues talk of court news. And we'll talk with them, too. Who loses and who wins? Who's out, who's in? And take upon us the mystery of things as if we were God's spies. And we'll wear out in a walled prison pacts and sects of great ones that ebb and flow with the moon. Take them away. He that parts us shall bring a brand from heaven and fire us hence like foxes. Go, wipe thine eyes. The good year shall devour us flesh and fell. Ere they shall make us weep. No, we'll see them starve first. Come. The Duke of Cornwall is dead, and Edmund holds power in Britain. Both Regan and Goneril want to marry Edmund, and in her jealousy, Goneril poisons Regan and stabs herself. Cordelia is hanged on Edmund's orders and Lear bears her in his arms. Howl! 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 Oh, you are men from stone. Had I your tongues and eyes, I'd use them so that heaven's vault should crack. She's gone forever. I know when one is dead and when one lives, she's dead as earth. Lend me a looking glass. If that her breath will mist or stain the stone, why then, she lives. Is this the promised end? Or image of that horror? Fall and cease. This feather stirs. She lives. If it be so, it is a chance that doth redeem all sorrows that ever I have felt. Oh, my good master. With thee away. Tis noble to your friend. Peace, good Edgar. A plague upon you, murderers, traitors all. I might have saved her. Now she's gone forever. Cordelia. Cordelia. Speak a little. Hmm? What sayest thou? Her voice was ever soft, gentle and low. An excellent thing in woman. I killed the slave that was a hanging thee. My lord of Albany, Edmund is dead. That's but a trifle here. You lords and noble friends, know our intent. What comfort to this great decay may come shall be applied. For us, we will resign during the life of this old majesty to him our absolute power. All friends shall taste the wages of their virtue and all foes the cup of their deservings. Oh, see, see. And my poor fool is hanged. No, no, no life. Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life, and thou no breath at all? Thou'll come no more. Never, never, never. Never. Pray you, undo 
this button. Thank you, sir. Do you see this? Look on her lips. Look. Look there. Look there. He faints. My lord. My lord. Break, heart, I prithee break. Look up, my lord. Vex not his ghost. Oh, let him pass. He hates him that would upon the rack of this tough world stretch him out longer. He is gone indeed. The wonder is he hath endured so long. He but usurped his life. Friends of my soul, you twain, rule in this realm and the god state sustain. I have a journey, sir, shortly to go. My master calls me. I must not say no. The weight of this sad time we must obey. Speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. The oldest hath borne most. We that are young shall never see so much, nor live so long. <laughs>